Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Grand Tactician, The Civil War. It is November 16th, 1863. Historically, it is the week that Abraham Lincoln gave his Gettysburg Address, though that is not happening here. Here's the current situation with national morale, national support, the morale of the armies, the number of loyal states, the men in the field, etc., etc., uh, I have gone in and recruited at least one brigade of infantry for every single fort that I currently hold in the South so that we don't easily give up any more of those forts. Most of them are on the coast uh, and are threatened, of course, by the Yankee Navy. We do still hold Vicksburg, and I'm hoping we can continue to do so. Uh, we're going to try to push the Yankees out of central Tennessee. We did just win a battle here. Uh, so we should see them pulling back, and maybe we can move up and even take Nashville. At least that's the goal. We do have this continued issue of the presence of the Union in northeastern North Carolina uh, because my whole army was over here, which meant they had an easy road down in that direction. Well, now we're hopefully cutting them off from supply, though it looks like they're able to be supplied by their Navy over here. So we may have to retake Elizabeth in order to be able to do that. Let's see what happens today. So at least for the time being, I'm going to take Simon Bolivar Buckner's Army of East Tennessee, and I'm going to make it a core of the Army of Tennessee. I'm hoping that will get it to move. I've been trying to get Buckner to move up here with the rest of the Army of Tennessee for a while now, and he just will not move. I don't know what's going on with the orders there. But no matter what I do, he just sits there. His readiness is good. But every time I give him orders, he just sits there. All right, it still wasn't doing anything. So the next best thing I can do is I'm transferring everybody out of Buckner's command. I'm putting one division directly under Hill uh, in the Army Command. I'm putting the uh, artillery there. I shifted Vaughn's division over to Hardy's Corps. And I shifted this cavalry division over to Wheeler's Corps. So that's the only way I can think to get those men up here so that they'll be in place to be able to join in the invasion of Nashville. Let's take a look real quick and see what's happening elsewhere. We're still sitting just outside of Richmond. It looks like there's some skirmishing going on here. Uh, but we are still not in a place where our corps are ready. They're all still sitting at a poor state of readiness. So there's not much I can do there to move them. All right, let's go ahead and move on Nashville and see what happens. Let me make sure that these guys are transferred over. I still got one day left, so I'm gonna wait. Give it a little more time. It looks like the Reserve Corps just moved. Now we're going to go ahead and move and see if we can maybe engage these lead elements. One of his corps just disintegrated? Wow. Okay. It must have been empty. Is he just going to pull out and just let me have Nashville? I think I'm going to send this... How many men does this reserve corps have? Estimated 8,000. I'm going to send this cavalry corps down here. Although I don't know if they're going to be able to if they if they decide they're going to go through Nashville to do it. Let me get my army headquarters up here. Because they're going to actually have men assigned to them. Is that headquarters also not going to move? It seems like everything that was in these woods just will not move. And that includes my army headquarters, which really sucks. All right, let's hit them. I want Nashville. This is one of those opportunities that doesn't come along very often. I'm going to auto-resolve it just because we've got like a 3 to 1 advantage. Narrow victory. Oh, it should have been a lot easier than that. We lost 514 men. Killed 1375. We'll take it. We're driving the Yankees from Nashville. We're also sending our cavalry down here. 
to take this supply depot to recapture Decatur. So we're making some progress now into December of 63. Looking at Vicksburg now, we've got the Army of Western Louisiana, 22,000 strong. We've got the Army of Mississippi, 64,000 strong. We've got the Department of the West, 44,000 strong. I think we've got more than enough men to hold Vicksburg, so I would like to actually break out from here if I can. Let's see. Army of Tennessee, all told, has 112,000, but they're spread out all over the place. His Army of Tennessee, just 29,000 men down there. Maybe there's an opportunity there. Let's take the Army of Mississippi under Pemberton down. See if we can hit them. And I'm also going to send Johnston out. Oh, and the 19th Corps decided to move right in when I did that. Oh, he's going to come south. All right. There's actually a Corps down there. Glorious victory at Fort Granger, which means we're taking Nashville. Nashville's ours. Let's grab these supply depots. Okay, looking good. We're going to take on Sherman's 29,000 men with John C. Pemberton's 57,600. Let's do it. All right, we're on the Champions Hill battlefield. Not a surprise since we are fighting in and around Vicksburg. Major advantage, so we want to be aggressive here, and we've got a lot of available ground where we can deploy. I've got a ton of artillery here under Pendleton. Let's find a good spot. Oh, we got snowy ground, too. Okay. His whole arm, army is deployed right in front of us. So I'm able to build my battle line exactly the way I want. I've got cavalry on each flank just because. I want to keep an eye out for anything that's going on there. Uh, I've got artillery here. The rest of my artillery going to fire into his flank. And we're going to attack his right and make that the place where we hopefully destroy him in the snow of Port Gibson. I'm going to let the artillery do their thing for a little while before we start moving in with Carter Stevenson's division. What do we got here? Six-pounder field guns, 12-pounder field guns, six-pounder. So not a lot of power there. Here we've got 12-pound Napoleons and a six-pounder, or a set of six-pounders. We've got one division in reserve. Major action is going to start here with the Monroe Guard and the 3rd Brigade. We're up right on a fence. Clausen's Brigade here. Willamette Guard. whole lot else. A lot of butternut in this particular army. We're not engaging on this side and that's by design. Okay, let's move them in. Carter Stevenson, do your thing. Go. Army HQ is back pretty far. It's going to take a little while to get those division orders going. As long as these guys can hold in the meantime, I think they can. Pretty even casualties so far, which is totally fine by me. I've got a big advantage in numbers. that courier. I'm 
may be better off just to have Stevenson issue orders to his division, his brigade commander. Do it that way. So this way the order comes from Stevenson rather than from the army commander to Stevenson. It'll happen faster this way. Oh, there's the courier finally arriving. Oh man, Commander of the Ro uh, Monroe Guard, Robert Graham, was killed. Some pretty intense action happening over here. Here comes Carter Stevenson's division. the trap. What is happening here? McClausen broke? Really? Dang, dude. Thankfully, we've got a reserve. Let's bring up the Brutus Brigade. The Ohio boys in their scarlet and gray. Gonna see their first action, I believe. Brigade will plug that gap. Carter Stevenson's gonna smash his flank. What's the rest of the army doing? Looks like he's now shifting everybody. Board into him, boys. Third Brigade's elite now. Somebody asked me in the uh, comments the other day why I always go off of uh, this flag. It's because all of the units already have a very similar flag to that. So I want their second flag to be something unique. Distinguish it on the battlefield. All right, Brutus Brigade, charge these guys. Give them the bayonet. Drive them off. All right, we've pretty well smashed his right as planned. Now we'll see what the rest of them do. Let's move shields forward. And Bowen. Let's see if we can smash the rest of his army while he regroups. So that brigade that we charged into has ended up surrendering as he started to break to the rear of my line. I'm hoping maybe we can do the same to these guys. So it looks like they're going to have a chance to fall back first. Alright, Hamilton, get up here and engage that cavalry. We'll have Shoop do the same. And I'm going to let Forney take over. Over here. We'll let Stevenson get a little break. He's lost almost 800 men. I want to bring the guns up. The action's getting hot over on our right. Vaughn's Brigade, Baldwin's Brigade. Campbell's Brigade. The courier's finally going to get to Hamilton, so he'll come up. 
get into this cavalry. Casualties much more one-sided now that we captured that brigade. 22% from the Union already. Pemberton, let's get your butt a little closer to the action, buddy. All right, Hamilton, hit his flank. Wait, his, he Hamilton also knows Harland. He's like, what do I do now? Wasn't expecting that. Dismount, pour it into him. Oh, we're gonna get behind the fence now. Or at least anchor on the road. I want them up a little closer so they can fire better. Corner's just about into position. Let's push him forward. Our guns will be there soon. It's just now noon. I want to see this cavalry break before we make any more moves on this side. I will go ahead and put some skirmishers out there. There he goes. forward on his flank now. It's already a minor victory. Yeah, pull those skirmishers back in. Yeah. Long range. Push Bowen forward. We're just going to press on all fronts right now. We've got the numbers. Let's use them. Send everybody at Buckland. We've got them isolated over there. Should have mounted the horses up first, but it looks like we did the job. There it is. We got them on the run, boys. So that's a victory in Mississippi. Just whipped Billy Sherman's butt. Love it. Hit him again. There's going to be a super one sided casualty figure, I think, by the time it's all said and done. Let's see what it looks like. Hit him! Drive the invader from my soil! We got another capture, second brigade. Oh, lovely. Nice job, Pemberton. Take that, Sherman. 50% casualties for Sherman. What a complete disaster for the Union. That's what we need. Now we just need to duplicate that in the East. 15th Corps fleeing in panic. Beautiful. That's what we like to see. Here's the overall numbers. He's up to 650,000 men in the field, which is going to make these victories all the more important as they happen. We've got his national morale at 66. Mine's only at 58. Obviously, that's going to improve as things go along. Kentucky joined the Union. I thought Kentucky was already in the Union, but that's okay. Major Confederate victory at Port Gibson. That's what we like to see. Let's see what else we can push.
Looks like we didn't engage the 19th Corps at all. They've only got 3,100 men there. All right, let's push the Army of Mississippi further south. Then let's also see what's happening over here. Cavalry Corps got Decatur. We're holding Nashville. I'm pretty content to sit tight and let him come at me in Nashville. All right, somehow they drove us off once again. I think it has to do with readiness because I didn't actually fight any battle here, but it looks like they're going to send the 1st and 3rd Corps all the way back to Raleigh, North Carolina now. And if they're going back, I feel like I probably need to go back with all of my men to try and keep them together. How many men's he got over here? The 14th Corps has 35,000 men. 21st Corps has another 24,000. Yeah, I can't handle all of that. So we're going to send Beauregard's troops down that way as well. We'll just reform and rally. Get ourselves uh, ready and go from there. All right, here's some good news. The Battle of Mobile Bay, which historically was a great victory for the Union, ends with the uh, Western Gulf Blockading Squadron retreating. It was a remarkable strategic victory with the enemy fleet steaming to safety of their harbors. Excellent. Good job, guys. I'm going to send Theophilus Holmes in the District of Arkansas, 20,000 strong, uh, up to drive out the District of Northern Louisiana. See if we can clear all federal troops out of Louisiana and maybe even move a little farther north and draw some of these troops out of Jackson if I can. So the major problem we're dealing with in the east is you look at the Army of Northern Virginia. They've got as many men available as they have disabled right now. It's just a, a shambles, this army. And you can see here, I don't even know how some of this is possible. 1,400 men in the brigade, 4,700 disabled. They don't even have a max that's that high. They only have a max of 1,300 in some of these. So I'm not entirely sure if that's just a glitch from all the updates or what. But that's obviously part of the problem that we're dealing with with the Army of Northern Virginia. Okay, let's go ahead and move. Are these? They're set set to raid. I don't want them to raid. Let's move these guys up into Arkansas. There there are some armies up here though. So let's take a look and see what we're dealing with. Army of the West. Army of the Missouri. If they get everything together, they've obviously got a lot of men there. But I'm at least going to move up as far as Arkansas with the District of Arkansas. I figure they'll fight fight well there. I don't know how many men he's got here, but it's probably more than I'm interested in fighting. This should be an interesting battle. We've got a cavalry corps, our cavalry corps under Joe Wheeler, uh, that I sent down to Decatur uh, to hold the line down there. I've moved them forward toward Corinth, Mississippi, and we've encountered the 16th Corps, 20,000 strong. Going to be a pretty even fight. The Battle of Tuscumbia, Alabama. I believe that's Helen Keller's hometown. Uh, so this should be interesting. It's now January of 1864. Be curious to see what battlefield this is fought on. All right, I'm not entirely surprised we're fighting this on the Shiloh battlefield. I'm a little disappointed, though, because this is not the ideal location for a cavalry unit to operate. There's a lot of swamp land. It's a difficult area to fight. And it looks like he's going to be right up in here. So we're going to try to keep everybody together as much as we can since the numbers are fairly even. But since we have mostly cavalry, we need to be very careful about how we choose to operate. Oh, there he is. He's right there. Dang, I wasn't expecting him to be that close. Okay. So let's start moving into position right now. The good news is we have the mobility to be able to run around and grab some of the objective points while simultaneously engaging him. So I'm going to send Davy Crockett's Mountaineers to go grab one of those objectives. And then we're going to start getting our divisions into position. Okay, he sent some skirmishers over as we're getting into position. We'll try to deal with them as quickly as I can. 
got everybody dismounted so I can move up and anchor myself against the shoreline. Hopefully he pretty well sits still while I bring up the rest of my men. My men. To get the guns up on this hill. I think he's just going to sit there with those skirmishers. He's slowly shifting over this way. Looks like a lot of my troops aren't going to move into the positions that I ordered them to until we drive off those skirmishers, which we just did. So now let's push forward up to the shoreline. All right, he just sent some more skirmishers down. Now the good news is we have a higher rate of fire than he does. The bad news is that means we'll run out of ammunition faster. It also means he's probably got range on him. We're still waiting for the other division to get in position. I ended up keeping Davy Crockett's Mountaineers with me so we could engage his entire force at once. Let's see how this is working out so far. Alright, so far so good. He does have high ground on me. And these are only a six pounder field gun. So it still help. Far so good. Ammunition 42 rounds, 48 here, 46 here, still 60 there, they're not really engaged. I think we're okay at the moment, 308 losses, we gotta keep an eye on that. That's really what this is gonna come down to, who, who loses the men and ammunition first. We're fighting not too far from Shiloh Church. Looking good. 5% casualties for us, 8% for him. Issue's going to be ammo, I think. And my flank. I'm a little concerned about the losses Morgan's taken compared to the other units. We definitely need to get David Crockett's Mountaineers some help in a hurry. Davison's got to get his people up there. Put Pegram on their flank. We've got an opportunity there. Let's also get these guns going. How we doing over here, Morgan? Uh, he's lost about a quarter of his men. He's he's got three brigades on. Him. That's the main issue there. Thankfully, he just drove one off. So we may see trouble on our on our right while he has trouble on his right. Pegram's 
having trouble getting across. He hasn't lost a man. How we doing, Morgan? Hang on, buddy. Just hang on. He's down to 22 rounds of ammunition, too. We gotta break his right. Do it in a hurry. Come on, Pegram, get over there. Morgan's up to a third loss now. He's down to 19 rounds of ammunition. This has got to happen quickly. We have to destroy his right. So we can push forward over here. We can pull Morgan back and maybe curl, cruise, and rustle around. You know what I think I might do here, actually, is shift Harrison over. They've only lost 56 men. I can afford to pull a unit out of my center there. Need Pegram to get across. Come on, guys. There we go. These guys are in close to fire. Morgan's getting low on ammo now. But now we're going to quickly turn his right, I hope. And I think Harrison's going to get there just in time. Morgan's going to not only run out of ammo, he's going to hit 50% casualties. Mount them up. Get them out of here. Alright, that worked out. Okay, Harrison, do your thing. Not take long to turn his right. Just broke Fitzhugh in the center. Wow, casualties are actually pretty even now. A quarter lost on both sides. And that's mostly because of how he was loading up on my right. Second brigade's gonna break just because he's gonna hit 50% casualties. I'm impressed he's hanging on this long with that flanking fire hitting him. There he goes. Oh man, and just as we broke him, we lost Crutchfield in the center. David Crockett's Mountaineers fell. Oh, they lost 50% casualties, that's why. Dang. Harrison because his are going to mount up pretty fast. It's going to be a victory, but it's going to be a costly one. Davison's actually lost more than 50%. How is he not broken? Oh, we just lost Cruz Brigade for the same reason. Oh, this is not going as well as I expected it to. Dang. All cavalry force just can't do the job. infantry. My goodness, look at those losses. I don't want to pull back. Man, he actually hit my guns too. Not sure how that happened. I don't want to pull back, but I feel like I might have to.
just because of the units that are broken. I don't want to see the same thing happen to Harrison. Got to pull back. Don't have a choice. So that's where it ends up. About 7,000 lost on each side, which is a little higher percentage for me than it is for him. We're going to wrap it up right there. That was not the result I was hoping for, but by and large, for a second straight episode, things are turning around, at least in the West. We just got to stabilize Lee's army and get some men into the those ranks in the East so we can make a push back toward Richmond. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. And we'll be back again soon with another episode. Thanks for watching.